that's a very big question. Um, so what, why do I think evidence-based practice is important? Um, I think teaching is a profession and uh, professions need to, professional decisions need to be informed by the best evidence available and that's as true of teaching as it is of medicine. Um, and so what we need to do is to find useful evidence that can inform uh, professional decision making. And I want to put it that way because I don't think it's simply a question of finding evidence of, of things that work and turning that evidence into a manual that teachers follow. I think uh, teacher education is therefore absolutely crucial and, the, and the, the point is to identify the key concepts, the key ideas in that evidence and help teachers understand how those ideas are used and for what, what purposes and to build that into teacher education and in that way you have a profession. I mean doctors don't sit and follow manuals, doctors understand um, what they need to do, how they need to do it and what the consequences are and I think we ought to be working in exactly the same way with teachers and teacher education. So yes, strong evidence is absolutely crucial but it shouldn't turn into um, instrumentalised checklists that teachers blindly follow. Between teachers and schools and communities, okay. I mean, I've been arguing for um, what I've called the relational turn in expertise because in my mind, too much emphasis has been on professional practice in terms of the autonomous individual um, professional. And um, I think, for me, the relational turn is about emphasizing the way in which um, professional practice is negotiated. Um, and so, uh, as professionals, we negotiate um, our practice with the clients we're working with, whether those are um, students in school, student teachers, if we're teacher educators, and with parents. Um, and so, what we are, what we need to do is to is to um, work pedagogically uh, with with students, with student teachers, and with parents in order to. Um, help us understand what matters for them, their motives, and help them, then help them align their motives with, with educational purposes. So what does that mean then in terms of um, how we work with communities? You're talking about the communities around schools. Um, that's again another very big question. Um, I think a lot of it is about respecting the purposes of the, of the um, parents and the community. Um, and then if one feels that those purposes are not helpful in uh, helping the child become educated and access what they need, then we need to do some very careful negotiation work with the parents. And I've got some lovely examples of that through one of my PhD students at the moment who's working in Rajasthan uh, with a, in a village community there with a school and the teachers in that school spend a large amount of time talking slowly and carefully over time with parents about educational values, not telling them what they should be doing, but bringing them into um, a reasoned account of why one set of values is probably better for the child than another set of values. And it's all done carefully and conversationally and very respectfully. And they do exactly the same with the, with the communities that these parents uh, make up in the, in, in, in the village and help the parents see that they are part of sharing responsibility for the school and, and, and their child's development as much as the school is. So it's about aligning motives and bringing people together around uh, an under, a shared understanding of the child's educational trajectory in a way that the parents and the community recognise that it's good for the parents and the community as well as for the child. And I think an important thing to remember about Vygotsky is that he was um, really interested in how people make sense, how people think, 
Um, and um, his mission was, I mean, he, he wanted to create a Marxist psychology. He wants, and by that he meant he wanted um, ordinary people to have access to the most powerful tools for thinking and acting. And that people could then use those tools to act on the world and make it a better place. So when I'm talking about Marxists, I'm not talking about communism, I'm not talking about politics. I'm actually talking about that kind of liberationary aspect of, of Marxism, which is to give people the best tools so that they can work on the world and make it a better place. Now, I don't think that's changed. I think uh, whether we're talking about the develop, what we call the developed world or the developing world, um, having the best tools available to be and to use them responsibly um, is still an important part of what education is and giving people access to the best conceptual tools, the best ideas is what we owe children, it's what we owe the next generation and it's what we owe the future of society. We want society to be good.